Hello Snarkitarians, what's up? It's Jess, how are you? Uh, thank you so much for joining me today. It is mid-January of 2020. It is snowing outside. Made a few adjustments if you haven't noticed already. I am in my office. Uh, this is a work in progress. I'm trying to clean this out and make it more into um, an office where I can actually film more. So I was giving it a try today. It also has a nice window. So hopefully it'll have some better light coming in. But I'm a little late to the game on this, but I do enjoy watching other YouTubers do their year in review kind of thing. So today, I don't know that you can see this, but it is the first annual Snarkies. It is award season, and I am going to look back on 2019 and go over some of my favorite makeup that I've tried. New things. I'm going to let you know if my holy grails have been replaced by other things that I've used and discovered throughout the year. So we're going to do that today. If you're new to this channel, hi! Thank you so much for joining again. Like I said, I'm Jess. I am 40, <clears throat> almost 45. Um, I have generally combo to dry skin and um, I try to film once a week. So that's all you need to know pretty much. So we're going to get started with the 2019 Snarkies. I figured I would try and kind of go through the products the way that I put the products on my face. However, I normally do blush, highlighter, and bronzer after I do my eyeshadow, but for the sake of this video, I'm just going to kind of keep the complexion stuff all on the same uh, area. So we're going to start with primer. Smooth Operator Award goes to Still My Holy Grail, which I think I did discover this year, but it was early on this year. It is the Flower In Your Prime Hydrating Primer. I just think that this is the best primer I have right now. It does not pill. It does not, it, it works well with the majority of my foundations. I haven't had a problem with any issues under my foundation. It may keep my foundation on a little bit longer, my makeup a little bit longer. Uh, I don't notice whether, I think if something's just a bad foundation, it's gonna come apart, break down and everything, whether I have a primer on or not. But I like this one because it has a nice hydration to it. Like I said, I'm in my mid forties and I need all the hydration I can get. It does not smooth out any kind of pores or anything like that, which is okay. Um, as long as you're aware of that, but I think it does provide a lot of really nice hydration and that's what I look for in a primer. I use a moisturizer, but then if I can get an extra layer, then um, even better. It's a win-win situation. So nothing has replaced this. I do want to give a shout out though to the ColourPop Pretty Fresh primer. That's probably my second favorite one. The only gripe I have about that one is the container and the pump because that broke in my bag when I was on vacation. I had uh, primer all over my makeup bag. But other than that, same thing. It's very similar to this, very comparable, uh, a little cheaper probably. Whew, I'm already out of breath. How can that be? I blame it on Christmas time and the holidays. It kind of does the same thing. It provides a lot of really good hydration, does not necessarily smooth out the pores, but you can always apply a little bit of a pore filler, you know, where you need it and then put this on. Um, probably start with this and then put the pore filler on over top of that. So that's my primer award. I do want to touch on things as well that I just did not like. They were the worst for me. Not that I tried a ton and a ton and a ton of makeup because I have to purchase it uh, with my own money, which is fine. There were some things that stuck out. Not everything has a worst kind of category, but uh, for me, and I don't have it, I think I uh, gave it to somebody. The worst primer for me was the Smashbox Primerizer. Oh, it was okay. It was just like a really thin moisturizer. It didn't really feel like it kept my skin hydrated at all. As a matter of fact, it made me break out. So not a big fan of that. Like I said, I gave it to somebody else, but that was just not my favorite. Moving on to foundation. So for foundation, if you uh, have been following this channel for the last year, my holy grail foundation is the physician's formula healthy foundation and once again it is still my 100 percent holy grail i love this foundation i have it on today my skin looks fantastic and um i just haven't found anything that's better uh, in my last video i did talk about the clinique even better refresh foundation which i think is a more expensive dupe for this 
It does a lot of the same things. It has a nice uh, kind of natural finish to the skin, like a natural satin matte finish. Uh, it wears really well for me. Just has nice coverage overall. I usually tend to be like a medium coverage kind of gal. Sometimes light to medium. I hate heavy cakey foundations. That's not my jam. I don't necessarily need it. So this certainly gives me the coverage I want, the radiance that I want. It doesn't break down on me and it's just an overall fantastic foundation. I hope you can get it at Ulta still. When I went there the other day, uh, I was on clearance. I don't know what that means exactly. Um, I hope they are not uh, reformulating this in any way, shape or form because that will make me very upset. But this is it. It still remains my holy grail. This is, by the way, the Home Base Award. Got it. Honorable mention for foundation was one that I uh, that came out the very beginning of 2019, probably January or February, I would say. This is the L'Oreal uh, Infallible 24 Hour Fresh Wear. Now, the only problem with this is that it is not cruelty free. I will continue to use it and will use it up. I probably won't repurchase it. But again, it kind of does the same thing. It's a nice satin matte foundation. Not too cakey, it is a thinner formula, so I do like that. And um, it just wears, you know, pretty similarly to the Physician's Formula Healthy Foundation. Moving on to the worst foundation. And as far as foundations go, <laughs> if you watched my Juvia's Place review, that was the worst foundation that I tried this year. It was thick, it was cakey. I don't feel like I used a lot. I had watched other reviews and, you know, was aware that you didn't need a lot of, of makeup for good coverage. It had really good coverage. It was a high coverage foundation, but it made me find lines and wrinkles that I didn't even know existed on my face. I had some popping up over here and over here. They were just very strange, collected in my forehead uh, wrinkles quite a bit. And um, that was just a no go. I gave that one away as well. So hopefully somebody else is using it. Not that it's a terrible foundation. It was just a terrible foundation for me. Moving on to concealers. I have a gripe with concealers and it's not really the concealers fault. It's just the structure of my under eye bags. I have them. It's a fact of life. I will continue to get them. I do moisturize. I use my Aquaphor. I use other under eye moisturizers. I use masks to keep things kind of hydrated. Any concealer I have is going to kind of crease in my, in my wrinkles. That's just a fact of life. It's the way it is. Some crease less than others. The one thing I won't tolerate is concealers making me look super cakey. I would, I would rather have creasing than dry under eyes. I just think that is so unflattering uh, for everybody. And especially when you have, you know, older skin and they tend to crease more apparently. But as far as concealers go, the undercover award goes to the Pacifica Natural Minerals Liquid Cover Full Coverage <laughs> Lasting Foundation. Um, I Did I get this? I don't think I actually got this when I got the uh, Pacifica a light foundation. I just did the review on the foundation, but I later gave this a try because I heard that it was more emollient, kind of like the Tarte Creaseless Concealer. A lot of people don't like that. I tried it. I think it's, I think it was fine. It was kind of the same consistency as this. Again, it creased under my eyes. That's fine. It did not get cakey though. Um, so I'm totally a fan of that. As far as the worst concealer I tried, it's probably a toss up one edge, the other one out. Um, I did try the Makeup Revolution hydrating thing that came out. <laughs> I forget what it was. The Revolution Conceal and Hydrate Radiance Concealer with Hyaluronic and Acai Medium to Full Coverage. This was a weird one. I, I don't know what to say. It was just really strange. It looked really dry and really cakey first off. And then as the day progressed, it got more emollient and less creasy and cakey. So that's weird. It's very strange. Still kind of want to give this a try. I want to try it with some Aquaphor under my eyes and see how that works out initially. I think it's going to be a big old cakey mess, but I'm willing to give it another shot only because even though it started out cakey, it kind of improved throughout the day. So I am going to give this another try. However, the one that was just the absolute worst for me was the elf camo <laughs> concealer i know they just came out with a hydrating one i do want to try that only because it's a couple bucks so it's no big deal if i don't like it either but that elf camo concealer was just 
god awful for me. It did the same thing as the sharp tart shape tape. Anybody else have the worst time saying that? It always comes out as sharp tape. Anyway, um, it's just dry and cakey right off the bat. It doesn't work itself out at all. It just looks like crapola throughout the day. So that is a huge, huge pass for me. Sorry, Elf. So a lot of people love it. I hate it. Moving on to contour. I never really used contour very much until this year, and I really haven't tried that many things. Um, I pretty much stick with bronzer, but I did. there were two that I did try. I really have no problem with either of them. One's a little bit cooler tone than the other. Um, the first one I got is the Triangle uh, Artist Contour Stick from Catrice. I use this quite a bit. I used it today as the contour today. I think I can make it look really subtle and uh, natural looking, which is which is great. I think it blends really nicely. The only problem I kind of have with this is that it's so creamy, you can't use it, you know, in the stick form. You kind of have to either take a brush or you have to take your finger and kind of dot it all over your face. But that being said, it does blend out really nicely. The other one that I did get um, when I tried the Physician's Formula Organic Wear line, I got the Sculpting Bronzer with Jojoba Oil. And this is the darker of the two colors. And I like this too. This is a little, little more orangey, a little more warm. The one thing, this is a more solid stick, so you can kind of dot it on, you know, in the stick instead of taking your finger or a brush. The one thing I don't like, I don't know that you can see that, but it kind of cakes up on the top. So sometimes I have to just take a paper towel or something and just wipe it off. It is a drier formula, but again, for whatever reason, maybe the jojoba oil, once it's on your skin, it kind of works into it and it is much, it, it's not easily, <laughs> is easily blendable as well. So I really don't have a problem with this. These are the only two. What is, this is the uh, the Shady AF Award. Get it? Yeah. Uh, this is like the Dundies. I tried to do this like the Dundies, but uh, there's no uh, busiest, bushiest beaver award in this one. Sorry. Boop. If you watch The Office, you know what I'm talking about. If you don't watch The Office, so you know what I'm talking about. There really wasn't any... Um, worst category as far as contour because like I said I only tried to so we're moving on okay bronzer like I said I have used quite a few bronzers this year I really like them did I have a bad one kind of it wasn't terrible but the uh the fantastic award uh goes to the BH Cosmetics Brilliance Bronzer this is in Golden Gal um, this is a nice light shade, but it warms my skin up really, really well. I have it on today. Um, when I go with warmer colors, I like this one so much. It blends so nicely. I don't even have to powder my face. It just goes on. It's a nice wash of color on the skin. I blend it up here on the forehead, down here. It's one that I really, I really like, and I've used it quite a bit. I will certainly repurchase that. The other one that does deserve an honorable mention is the Bronzing Act Matte Bronzer in Light from Pure Cosmetics. This one I saw from a Raw Beauty Christie review, and she really liked it. It does smell like Nestle Quick Powder, but I like this. It is a nice, buildable bronzer. It's a little cooler, so on the days that I want to do more, you know, cooler colors like eyeshadow and stuff, this goes on a little uh, kind of works better with that color scheme so this is definitely an honorable mention i like this stuff quite a bit and so i never thought i was a blush gal until i found this particular blush that wins the award for a hot flash award this is the cover effects uh monochromatic blush duo matte and shimmer and this is in soft peach holy smokes this is freaking gorgeous the matte is really nice i haven't used the shimmer color by itself i kind of use that as a topper on top or kind of like a highlight sort of situation um it just gives it a nice little shimmer this is just beautiful i do tend to like poppy colors um warmer colors for blush i've been trying to find some cooler colors to wear in the winter time just to kind of mix it up a little bit nothing wrong with that um but this is hands down my uh holy grail blush of the year congratulations cover effects I'm sure you're thrilled this kind of goes uh as an honorable mention for the blush and highlighter category i talked about this recently is the pacifica cherry cheeks powder two blushes two highlighters i had it on my last video 
love them, love them, love them. Um, $13.99, go out and get them. Really nice. They're the worst ones that I tried. Not that they're terrible, they just weren't my favorite. And these I will do together because they are from the ColourPop Blush and Light Sticks. This is in the Poppy collection that I got over the summertime. Um, the color that I like the most is Aloha. It is a nice color. I feel like, you know, this kind of, again, it's the poppy warm colors that I really like, but I feel like once I put powder on, if I use powder to set it, it doesn't stay on. It kind of evaporates or the color goes away. It's the weirdest thing. So I don't think that has quite the punch that I was hoping it would. I like the concept of it. I think it's, I, I think it's creamy and it blends out really well, really nicely, but it doesn't seem to last like I feel a cream product should. With the highlight sticks, the light sticks, I didn't think this color would work for me, but it actually, it actually did. I don't know. You can kind of see it. Whoa, there it is. I mean, it has a nice shine, um, but the first time I wore it, it wore off and it was just kind of reduced to glitter. And it was weird because my chin was glittery and I was like, when did I, when did I put glitter on my face? And I realized it was actually the highlight stick that I used. Um, this is in the shade... Bullseye. Again, the shade's good. Initially, it looks really nice, but when it wears away, you're just left with a face full of glitter, and that is just not as complimentary. Doesn't do what you want it to do. It just looks like you have a face of glitter in your... I didn't do uh, powder. I don't really do use powder very much, but um, this is the Bounty Award um, because it's the most absorbent. I guess. I don't know. I was, I was kind of, you know, fishing for one of these, but this is the Becca Hydra Mist Set and Refresh Powder. I've used this quite a bit. I got this to, <laughs> I got this through a uh, BoxyCharm box uh, over the summertime. And I do really like this. When I need it in the summertime, I've been using it on my forehead and kind of here. It really, really does cover up the pores. It's really cool because it's really cool. However, I've noticed, has anybody noticed this? I feel like it's not, it doesn't have that wet, as wet uh, a cooling feeling as it did before when I first got it. I mean, I keep this as keep me closed to keep me cool. I do that. It's closed. It's tightly closed. So I'm wondering if it's losing its cool. It's not quite as fondy as it used to be. Okay, so that does it with complexion. Uh, we're going to move on to eyes. And it was really hard to beat my holy grail um for my eyeshadow palettes and once again the one that i used the most i would say is the Too faced chocolate bar an oldie but a goodie i it hasn't expired yet somehow still smells really good i can't believe i haven't hit pan on any of these yet i'm working on salted caramel that's getting low and milk chocolate is getting very low as well i use this quite a bit. I use it a lot for work. It's so easy to just throw like salted caramel in the crease and then maybe a little bit of, what is this, creme brulee? Yeah, creme brulee here, which is kind of what I did today. It's just easy and you can kind of make it more dramatic. It's a very versatile palette. It's great to travel with. Um, you know, it's a nice solid case. It's not going to get smushed in your suitcase. It doesn't take up a ton of room. I think it's, um, it's pretty travel friendly. So this, I haven't found one that's beat it yet. Honorable mentions, and they may become my holy grails for this coming year, because I have been using this one quite a bit. I talked about this in my last video. This is the e.l.f. New Classics palette. Um, I feel like you can use this as kind of a dupe for the Too Faced chocolate bar. I think there are a lot of comparable colors in this, and this is $14 or $14.99 as opposed to $49. So... If you're debating, if you're on the fence for the Too Faced Chocolate Bar Palette, give this a try first. If you don't like it, it's not the worst thing in the world because it is so affordable for all these colors, all these shades. They blend nicely. There's good pigmentation to it. So um, at this point, between the two, had not known any better if this was out when the Chocolate Bar Palette first came out, I would have gone with this most likely. But this may be a holy grail in this coming year. We will find out. I'm going to have to do a lot of editing for this friggin' video. My least favorite palette, this is one that I got in my uh, BoxyCharm palette, or BoxyCharm box, is the Butter London Natural Goddess uh, palette. It's pretty. It's kind of boring. And I don't think it's um, a complete palette. I mean, the brown is dark. It's not dark enough. I don't use that blue very much. 
And the three shimmers or four shimmers are actually very similar in color. The one that I probably use the most is Star, is this kind of mossy green color, which is pretty, but it's not something I travel with. It's almost like a, an ancillary palette to use with some of your more complete palettes. If you want just like a, a different color shimmer or a pop of blue or something like that, this is probably my most uh, disappointing palette that I got in BoxyCharm. Didn't really have a choice in what I got there, but it's okay. Okay, moving on to brows, my On Fleek award. Does anybody say that anymore? Not really. It's kind of funny. Um, this is actually my favorite and my least favorite. This is the Urban Decay Brow Blade in Taupe Trap. You see this in the description box if you see what I use on my face. I always link that in the description box. I will do the same as well as, as, well as list uh, all my award winners. I love this. I... <laughs> used to do like a three product kind of thing for my eyebrows and I think it was pretty ridiculous. So the one day I just wanted to do something really natural and I used the ink stain just by itself. It has a nice uh, little thin pen and um, I'm like I'm just going to use the, the ink stain instead and I think I got a really natural more defined almost look like I have bladed brows and um, I'm really happy with the way they've been turning out and I will continue to probably just use this. On the other hand it does have a waterproof pencil and of this I am not a fan. I feel like it's really stiff. It's really waxy. It's a little it's slightly lighter than the ink stain. So if I just want to do pencil, I don't, I don't know that it shows up as well as the ink stain does. I guess you can just like fill it in a little bit if, if you need a little bit more fluff, but I feel like it's a little harder to work with. Um, I think the ink stain is really easy to work with if you have the right color. Thank goodness it's not too dark for my eyebrows because Oh God, but this is, I, this is my second one. I will keep repurchasing this until something comes along that uh, beats this, but it's a little higher end, but I think it's worth it. I think it lasts a pretty long time and I love it. I don't really do anything as far as eyeliner because I usually just take a dark shade in my eyeshadow palette that I'm using if I have one and use that as an eyeliner. I'm just not a huge fan of eyeliners. Um, my eyes, my eyelids are pretty creasy and crepey so I feel like I have more control if I use a powder instead of a ink uh, pen or pencil so I don't really have an award for that. As far as mascara goes but um, I find that my favorite mascaras here of late are from Ulta. Ulta brand has some really good ones. My holy grail that I used a lot last year and a lot again this year was the uh, Legendary Length Mascara in Soft Black. I tried a couple different ones to see. Everyone's raving about Lash Paradise. Again, it's not my favorite. I think it just makes my eyes look clumpy and like little tarantula legs. And I don't like that at all. So I wondered if there was something kind of comparable, kind of a dupe to that in the Ulta brand. I don't know if it's a dupe, but the one that I've really been liking a lot and probably would consider my holy grail right now is the Ulta Beauty Maximum Lashes. It is in the pink tube. It has the scariest brush. <sighs> I'm always afraid I'm going to poke my eyeball out, but it is very spidery. It is very spiky. And you do have to be careful when you put it on for fear <laughs> of poking your eye. I haven't done that very often. I go very slowly, but I feel like it builds up. It has nice rubber rubber has nice rubber bristles, so I feel it separates and coats my lashes really evenly. I don't feel like I have to go back and kind of comb through them to get them more fluffy. I like this a lot. I think it's um, it's only like $10. Sometimes you can get them on sale, either like buy two, get one free, or $5 off, you know, 50% off or something like that. So I like these. They don't flake on me, they don't smudge on me, and um, they work really well. I can't say anything better about this. The one that really gave me a problem also got this in BoxyCharm. This is the Hank and Henry Slick With It Mascara Duo in Clout. And I thought it was really cool because the one end is this really... There you go. Can you see that? Uh, no. Um, really tiny bottom lash brush. And it worked well. I've used it and it, it works really well. I like how it makes my my lower lash line look. Problem, the other problem with this is that this 
end, the main end, it's okay. I don't feel like it coats my lashes as well. Um, it's a little harder to work with. It's really spiky, so I don't feel like it gets, I'm afraid I get some in my inner corner. The other problem, the main problem I have with this, it is a, it's a bitch to get off. I use my makeup cleansing balm, my, my Clinique take the day off. I use my erase your face cleansing cloth. I do another wash with my Pacifica facial, facial wash. I cannot get this stuff off without pulling some of my eyelashes off in the process. It stays, which is good, but have a, when I want it off, I want it off. I don't have to work that hard to get this mascara off. So this was kind of a bust for me. I'm not a fan. Um, I'll, I'll pass. I'll see if anybody wants this. I'll declutter. Moving on to finishing spray to finish. One of my holy grails. What did I use a lot last year? I would have to say the, the MAC Fix Plus I used quite a bit. I had one from Makeup Revolution. It was a hyaluronic fix, which I think it did a good job. I used that a lot too. And the Contrice Prime and Fine, the dewy one, is really nice. However, the one that I... I bought two more cans of this uh, at Christmas time, but this is the Morphe Continuous Setting Spray. This is the Holiday Edition one, and Ulta, the Ulta near me still has some of these cans. These are on sale for $12, so I got two of them. I, th I think the regular price is $16. So, yeah. I love the way this feels. It gives a nice finish. A little dewy, not like super wet or anything, but it has a nice finish to it. It feels really nice. It's the On Lockdown Award. Aren't you lucky? My makeup stays in place better than if I don't wear it. So huzzah. Probably my least favorite one. And again, it's not that it's bad. It's just kind of a meh kind of thing is it's the Flower Beauty, the hydrating one. I noticed the more I use it, I would get these little white dots all over my face. And I just take a, a sponge and kind of dab them off my face. But mm, it just, it's just, eh. and I feel like it has a really nice mister as well. And it smells like white tea or some kind of tea. So that's nice too. It's just, I really feel like I have to work hard at getting a good, even cover on my face. So it's okay. I don't hate it. I will use it. I will finish it up, but I won't repurchase it. We're, we're getting down to uh, the, the end of it here. Where did lip product? I pretty much use this every day in one shade or another. It's the Fenty Beauty Gloss Balm. This is in Fenty Glow. I have it on top of a lip liner. Love this stuff. Just, your lips fit so much better. It's like I have Rihanna lips. That's fun. I also have Fenty, or Fussy, the pinker one. And they have a couple new colors that are coming out. Uh, there's one that almost looks like the Bite Beauty. Is it the Linen? White? breakfast blend. I don't know, something like that. But I do want to try that. The formula of these are just, it's just so nice. It's not sticky. It smells like fruit punch, kind of. Like adult fruit punch. <laughs> Without the alcohol. I don't know. It's not like Hawaiian punch. It just kind of smells fruit punchy. And it just gives your lips just a nice coating. Uh, yes, I did give you lip. I gave you two lips. An upper and a lower. And I put some Fenty Gloss Balm on them there. My least favorite is any kind of liquid lipstick. It's matte and drying. I just can't, I can't do, I need like a creamy lipstick. I don't do matte lips mostly because I have older lips. So any kind of cracks and crevices, even if my lips are moisturized, you're still going to kind of see it. It kind of enhances any of that um, creasing or cre creepiness on the lips. So I feel as I get older, I need either a creamier lipstick formula or definitely a gloss. You can't go wrong with a gloss. You can't mess it up. You don't have to necessarily line it unless it's like a really bright lip gloss. So, and finally, the last thing I wanted to cover was uh, tools, brushes, mostly brushes. I think the ones I was really surprised with, I saw Emily Noel pick these up when they first came out. These are the Eco Tools. 360 round brushes. There are three of them here. I actually don't use the large one very much. The two that I use pretty much every day is the concealer one, the small guy, and this one I use sometimes for cream blushes, but mostly for contour. Like I said, those contour sticks where I just kind of take it off the stick and then use it here. And then it also buffs out and blends the contour really, really well. Same thing with a, a liquid blush or a cream blush. I like these. 
This does a really good job as far as using it with concealer is kind of pressing it in as opposed to like sweeping it around. I think it presses it, uh, the concealer into the skin, which for me is more beneficial, even if I do get a little bit more um, creasing in, in the under eye. But I think this works well as opposed to like one of those concealer brushes that are flatter and just kind of swipe it on. So these are, these are really good. I know I've seen them at Walmart. I've seen them at Ulta. So they are still around. You can still get them. I still didn't talk about highlighter. What the hell? Damn it. I did. I did talk about the worst one, but I didn't actually do my favorite one. What the hell is wrong with me? I blame it on the smell. Let me finish up with the brushes here and then we'll go back. God, I'm so disorganized. I have everything written down. Everything's written down and it doesn't matter. This is so like anticlimactic. <laughs> anyway, the one that I, I like the least that I got this year is the Real Techniques Paddle Brush. This is a paddle shadow brush. I don't know why I got this. I thought it was a good idea just to kind of get in the crease there and kind of blend things out easier. I do have a larger foundation paddle brush from Real Techniques, which I, I think works really well with my stick foundations. I have two stick foundations that I use. and I feel like that works the best for those. This is just kind of weird, uh, and I feel like it doesn't blend. The only thing I would probably use this for is maybe like a highlighter, because it kind of, you know, it's a little thinner. You can get up under the brow bone a little bit better, or, you know, kind of tap on a highlight, a uh, light shimmery shade on the lid. Or if you just want to take like a base color um, prior to putting any eyeshadow on, you can just kind of sweep it on easily. But for the most part, I really don't use it. It's kind of a bust. Um, so sorry, real techniques. You know what? We're going to go back and finish my highlighter. So finally, this is the high beams award, uh, which goes to ColourPop. This is the, um, from the Disney villains collection. I don't know that they sell this anymore. I know they have the princesses. I don't think they have the villains collection anymore, but this is the mistress of all evil. This is a Maleficent one. Uh, it's a super shock highlighter. So you know what? Even if they don't sell this particular one, I'm sure you can find one that is very comparable. Um, it's a very nice champagne-y, blingy. Holy smokes. I mean, it's blinding. It's a wet highlighter. This is about as blingy as I go because the tendency is for uh, brighter highlighters, and especially powder highlighters. And you see it? I don't even know where I put it. Blingier highlighters, especially powder ones, tend to bring out more of your skin's texture, which isn't a good thing when you have older skin or more mature skin. But this is one of the few that I've tried that really stays kind of creamy. It is a creamier formula, so I think that's what helps with that. And then I usually just take a, a dampened sponge and just kind of press over top of it, and it really kind of evens it out and makes it look even creamier. So this one is hands down my favorite. Um, I do have, like I said, those Pacifica ones that I gave the honorable mention to with the blush. Um, those are really nice. Those are really natural. I will be using those quite a bit this year. This one I love. The other, the other way that I use this is to just kind of put a wash of it over my eyelid. It almost makes my eyelids look wet. And then maybe just put a little color in the, in the outer corner. And that's really pretty. Super easy just kind of a little extra bling on that. I currently have it on, obviously a highlight here. I also have a little bit on the front of the eyelid and then my inner corner. So I think it's pretty versatile and it works well for more mature skin as well. Finally, finally got the highlighter thing in. I don't know. Brain's going blank. What can I say? I'm looking forward to the new, some of the new stuff that's been talked about already. As a matter of fact, I got the new Milani Screen Queen foundation. Huh? Huh? Yeah, I'm going to be trying that tomorrow. So I'm hoping to film that when I try it, and I will be bringing that up for you soon. The other one I really want to try is the Bite, the new Bite foundation. The one with the micellar something in there. I don't know, but that looks really amazing now that Bite has uh, kind of gone into complexion makeup as well, not just sticking with lipstick and lip gloss and things. They've, they've added a couple of those too, but uh, I'm hearing some really good things about this and I'm excited to try that. Also, the these have been out for a little while, but the Huda Beauty, the, the nudes, the 12 shadow ones, that's the light, the, the medium and the rich shades. I think I want to get one of those. 
I do want to try the hourglass, basically the ambient light. This is not new either, but it's something that I want to try. And as I mentioned before, I do want to try the e.l.f. camo concealer, the hydrating one. What are you excited to see this year that you've heard about? If you follow Trend Mood on Instagram, which I do, there are a couple things. I know ColourPop's bringing stuff out every week. It's a little ridiculous. Um, I don't think I've seen anything on there that I'm dying to try other than the Going Coconuts palette. And that's, you know, it's been out. But uh, there's some stuff coming out. So I'm hoping I can get my hands on some of them anyway. I do have a couple gift cards burning a hole in my pocket right now. So anyway, that's it for my first annual Snarkies Awards. I hope you enjoyed it. Like I said, I'm a little late to the game on this, but I do like watching other other YouTubers do their, their awards for the year prior. I plan on doing this again next year. I uh, hope you like the new um, background. I'm going to try and zhuzh it up a little bit. I'm working on getting a makeup mirror and, and something fun in here too, so I can actually move some of them, a lot of my makeup into this room as opposed to keeping it in the bathroom. And so anyway, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. I do appreciate it. Subscribe and ring the bell. Join me this year. That would be really nice. I'd like to add I'd like to add to my Snarkitarian family. Uh, that's a goal for this year. I'm trying to figure out how to do that, but I will still be putting out content. I try and post videos once a week. There's been a couple lulls because of the holidays and vacations and things like that, but I am getting back into the swing of things and I'm looking forward to it. Also follow me on Instagram at pesky Snarkitarian. And I think that'll do it. I will see you in my next video. Bye. Ow. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you.